work. Uh, we've been at that. We've been at 135 for about nine years. It was killing my body since I was a teenage kid, man. Look, I'm, I just turned 25, and we want Josh Taylor. We want these guys. We want pro grades. We want. We want say Peter. We want all the belts. That's really who we want. We want to become a two-time undisputed world champion. You also invited Oscar De La Hoya to be here ringside. He represents Ryan Garcia. Is that a fight that you see in your future? Listen, if, if Josh Taylor is too busy with his wedding and there's nobody else around because the WBA belt is, is taken and the WBC is going to be fit, uh, fight, is going to be fought against say, Peta and uh, Pograis, then so fucking be it. I have problems with an alligator. I don't talk to what a whale. When I was a casual, I thought as a casual, I spoke like a casual, and I looked at boxing like a casual. But when I became a hardcore, I put away all those casual things. This is Michael Rogers, and welcome to Bodywork Boxing. Welcome back. It's Michael Rogers. Welcome to Bodywork Boxing. And today I want to talk about Tio's take back. It used to be the takeover. You know when he was down there at 135 making his run. You know he went out and knocked up Kobe for the IBF. Went down and got it on with Lomachenko for all the rest of the belts except for the WBC regular. When, when Loma was elevated to the franchise belt. Well. The young man made his return last night and against Camper and Pedro Camper. I didn't really didn't know much about the, the guy, and that's why I didn't do my pre-fight, you know, breakdown because there wasn't really much to go by. Um, I think it was only the second time the, the, the gentleman fought in America. You know, I had the privy of being able to go on the box wreck and, you know, look up what you know some of his bouts were about i see that he's very dangerous i knew that he was very dangerous between the second and the sixth rounds pretty much the time frame or the window in which he's able to get people out of there he has power he had a good chin i think he was like 34 one and one and tio you know he's known for having explosive power i think that one of the things about tio one of his attributes one of his more better attributes is his explosiveness and his suddenness. You know, he does have one punch concussive power, but I think it's the fact it surprises you because I think his speed is underestimated. And they were trying to say, oh no, the speed, people were watching the fight and saying the speed wasn't there. I'm not sure which fight they were watching. Um, was he able to take back the reins at 140? can't say right now he didn't have the reins at 140 he had the reins at 135 at one point in time but what he was able to do was take back a portion of the narrative surrounding Tio you know we always get on these fighters about having injuries and being all vocal about injuries after a loss you know switching trainers doing all that Tio didn't do all that he moved on and there was a lot of questions surrounding why he didn't want to rematch with George Cambosis and I've pick my brain for several weeks you know months actually trying to figure out well why wouldn't he want to rematch Cambosis? the only reason that you know the whole everything surrounding it to the the beef with him and Devin and why that fight didn't happen and who was really undisputed and you know him not really getting the respect that he deserved when he was the man at 135 because contrary to popular belief he did fight for all the belts when he fought on Machingo, that's why that bout was on and um he was the man now 
with a victory over Campa. You know, before the fight, T.O. said that it wasn't necessarily a name that, you know, he was all excited about, but he knew that he was a dangerous opponent. And what I tend to realize about T.O. is, like a lot of these boxers, they are cerebral. You know, it's always up here. So, it's just like Jenny Cutler back when, you know, he, he used to play for the Chicago Bears. They used to always do the film. And Rex Grossman, I think they kind of put that on Rex Grossman when he used to play for the Skins or whatever. It was like, you know, good Cutler and bad Cutler. You know, and I think this is an issue with good T.O. and bad T.O. Now, good T.O. is when he's focused. He don't have any outside of the ring issues and he's healthy. You know, I think that his family and the relationship with his family and what's going on in his home life, it may impact, he may not be able to compartmentalize as much as some of the boxers who are in those big bright lights. You know, we saw that when he faced Narcatani when, you know, he was in his relationship and there was some things going on with the family. I'm not sure if they agreed or whatever. It wasn't really none of any of my business. We do know that when there was turmoil in the home life, it showed up in the Nakatani fight and you know, a lot of people are crucifying him for saying, I'm never fighting tall fighters. So that was a little red flag going into this fight because they was listing this guy at 5'10". But when I went back and I watched the videos of Kampa, he doesn't fight tall. He doesn't fight long. He actually stoops down. He has his chin out. He throws a lot of punches and he's, he's, he was pretty much there to be hit, but he's very rugged, you know? So I was a little concerned because I was like, up oh, here's a taller fighter. T.O. don't like the taller fighters, but I think just like going into the Cambosis fight with the things, the personal matters with him and his son and, you know, his wife and things like that affected him in that camp, going into that Cambosis fight and, you know, once the mind is gone, everything else follows, you know, and so I think we saw a clear focus, Teofimo Lopez, you know, we saw the power, we saw the speed. Um, I will break down a fight. I just think that it was really a boxing clinic. I do have a round by round. You know, I have a round by round that I did, you know, with all seven rounds, like I do all my fights. You know, but a lot of times I seen I seen T.O. do five piece combination. I seen him do a seven piece combination. That was in the second round. Um, I put down, he hit this man in the fourth round, hit this man with a Mortal Kombat, Kung Leo type <laughs> combination, you know. And he finished it off with a 10-piece spicy at the end. Um, what was to be noted was that T.O. actually was 52% on his power punches. Anytime you get somebody cranking up around, you know, 50 or above percentage in your power punches, it pretty much tells the tale of the fight. You know, it was a couple of times when, I mean, he could have broke this dude's neck. You know, I like to see him dancing. I like to see him celebrating. I like to see a lot of the things that I saw in him and his comfort. I thought maybe he was too calm, but I'm like, okay, he's focused. But I think, you know, we did see some ring rust. You know, he spoke about the ring rust. And one thing I like about T.O. at this point in time is that he's being very transparent. You know, it's not like the Ryan Garcia's, even though Ryan said he was going to stop lying and all that. T.O. is actually being very transparent. You know, he's saying, look, I don't want to get caught up in this. These guys know what I'm all about. He wants Josh Taylor. He wants the winner of Regis and Zapata. He wants his Zapata. He basically let it be known that he wants all the belts. He really didn't even want to entertain a um, match with Ryan Garcia because they asked him, they said, hey, you know, we seen Oscar De La Hoya here. It was, you know, rumors of Ryan being here and this and this and that. He's like, yeah, but they left. He said, listen, man, if Josh Taylor is busy with his wedding and you know all these other people are got fights going on he's like sure i'll take these guys you know i'll turn their dreams into nightmares and that was his ending statement i think it's very strong he's always been one to say that he was actually going to go for the belt and that's what he actually is doing that was his ending statement you know he pretty much wants to do what he was doing before where he was pursuing the belts you know why he really didn't want the rematch with Cambosis, the world will never know. I think it's one of them things where T.O. even said it, look, man, I'm putting the past in the past. I'm looking forward. It was prying into his personal life before the fight. And I'm going to say this. What I'm starting to see that I'm starting to see this in every single camp, in every single camp where you know, the day after these victories, when these fighters actually go out and do what they're supposed to do, 
everybody and everything just gets discredited. You know, I hear a lot of people discrediting T.O. after last night's performance. I think that not only did he get back into the win column, he also got back on ESPN Highlight Reel, you know, and he got his motivation back, you know, for people that's going to try to drag him back down and try to make him revisit, you know, things in the past and all that. I think that he's moving forward. I think that he is embarking on a good place mentally and he's on a journey you know i think that um <clears throat> he showed that he can settle down he showed that he does have a jab a very good jab a stifling jab you know i think that his suddenness his explosiveness and you know the little flashes that he's shown with his use of the shoulder roll you know for one you're gonna have to have the kind of opponent that can actually beat it but he's showing glimpses that he's actually trying to master the shoulder roll. I'm not a big fan of it unless you can get away with it. He has the kind of reflexes and the stature, and he's a, a powerful counterpuncher where that style can cater to somebody like him because he has the power to go along with it to where he'll slip, or he'll move, he'll duck, he'll roll, you know, and he'll counterpunch you with an uppercut or a hook that, you know, we all know about the right hand, but upstairs, downstairs. You know he did go to the body more but i was impressed to see the jab i was impressed to see him maintain his composure and like unlike everybody else you know aside from people like tank um i think maybe the gary antoine's the boots of the world you know when somebody doesn't belong in the ring with him he's gonna show that they don't belong in the ring with him you know again i'm not gonna put too much on the campos fight a lot of people say and you know that you know that almost was like a disemblemish. It was a it was a good night at the office for Cambosas and a bad night at the office for Tio. You know that's what it's looking like. There's some real killers up there. I think Regis already responded. You know I don't know what Tank said. I mean I hear a lot of people saying that Tio looked garbage, but can't really judge a fight by hearsay or just by looking at the highlights. You know, a lot of people judge, you know, some of the boxes I rock with. Like Mike Tyson was judging the whole Bud versus Spence, you know, having based only seen Spence on highlights. I'm like, where do they do that at? You know, anyways, uh, that's one of them things where I would pretty much be saying you don't know shit about boxing. You're for me. <laughs> Anyways, man, um, I think T.O. Is, is in a good space, man. Where he go from there, I would love to see a, a Regis Progress. You know, I would love to see a Gary Antoine. You know, I think Brandon Lee has something coming up. You know, I think Richardson Henson's up there. It's a lot of smoke at 140. And if the young lord, Devin Haney, dips his toe up there at 140 after, you know, he gets through with what he has going on with Bob. Bob came out and um, you know pretty much set the tone from all the shenanigans we've been hearing these last couple weeks. And I think that 135 and 140 and 147 are all lit. Anyway, salute to T.O. for getting that W again. You know, we do, you know, appreciate the performance, man. You know, I think you're on a good path and just, you know, keep honing your skills. Keep, you know, sharpening your craft and things like that. You know, keep, you know, tone out the naysayers, man. It's just, you know, you can't please everybody in the sport of boxing. Some of us have recognized some of the things that you were able to do. And me personally, I would still love to see a Tank and Teal. Why not? You know, I know it's a 135 slash 140. I know it's a cross promotional thing, just like with Devin. It's a cross promotional and all that. I still would love to see those fights. I'm not going to say, oh, he's washed, he's terrible, he's this, he's that. You know what I'm saying? I know that the dude is a force to be reckoned with. And if he catch you clean the right way, you might go to sleep, you know? But what do I know? Cause I might not, I ain't even gonna say that. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all my likes. Thanks for all the comments, the subscriptions, you know, um, feel free to hit the, the email. It is bodyworkboxing247 at gmail. And the, in, the Instagram, is Mr. Underscore Body Work. Thanks for tuning in here at Body Work Boxing, where we don't take things for face value.
we do that body work. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you were here?